million of businesses are using Amazon's e-commerce platform to sell their products and so do Lego. We are brought in by Lego to consult them how to increase their profit by selling Legos on Amazon. Uh, let me introduce my group. My group is group one. My group members are Baraka Emanuel, Clarilyn Flicken, and myself, Shikha Tapliyad. Uh, we would like to start here with what we have concluded in our big data journey. Um, as consultant team for selling Legos on Amazon, our business decisions are optimize sales by identifying themes with high annual growth and optimize sales with competitive pricing based on demographic. And we would also like to go a little ambitious here and would suggest Lego to metamorphosize their business model and venture into metaverse. Now on metaverse, my group member, Callan Plekin is going to elaborate a little later. Well, our business decisions are based on prioritization score and analytical modeling. Our business decision increase sales by theme and increase sales by age demographic scores really high on prioritization matrix. What that means is they have high implementation and high business value. That means they are definitely going to bring in profit in terms of implementation, um, ease of implementation and uh, business value. Next is our analytical modeling. We have used three models here to predict our uh, to have a good basis for our business decisions. The first model is um, model based on theme, uh, targeting theme. Next is model targeting demographic. And next we have model targeting potential growth. When, as uh, you can see here, our models are high on accuracy. Our first model targeting theme is model KNN and Adaboost on the basis of Precision and recall, they are almost 99% accurate. Next is targeting demographic, a model linear regression. It is almost 76% accuracy, and uh, therefore um, I be it becomes a good basis for our business decision. And our last model is modeling with targeting growth, and models here are linear regression and add boost, and they are almost 94% accuracy. So based on our accuracy of our, our analytical modeling, and a uh, prioritization scores, uh, we think our business, business decisions are really strong. And on these uh, strong business decisions, we have following recommendations uh, to make. And to elaborate on those recommendations, I would like to invite my group member, Baraka Emanuel, and he's going to elaborate it further. So it's on to you, Baraka. Thank you. Thank you very much, Shika, for such a lovely introduction. Based on our findings, our recommendations can be broadly categorized into three segments, themes, demographics, and growth. Our theme model was able to identify themes that have been profitable over the years. We can leverage this model by introducing sub-themes to keep the current themes alive. For instance, Star Wars, one of the biggest franchise, has endless possibility for new sub-themes. From the model, we also discovered themes released based on popular movie or cartoons tend to do very well. We can leverage this information and anticipate potential themes based on upcoming movie releases. Our demographic model was able to identify themes that perform well based on different age groups. Findings of this model paired with analytics derived from Lego's Amazon shop will allow Lego pos to position products that have the best potential for performing well based on the demographical market that we're operating. More on this potential would be discussed a little bit later on by one of my colleagues. With our growth model, we were able to predict estimated annual growth with high accuracy, given price, reviews, star rating, how hard or easy it is to build such a theme, and value rating of Lego's themes. Using this model in conjunction to early review data from Lego's influencers or ambassadors, 
we will be able to predict the estimated growth of each theme about to be released. This will help LEGO anticipate the demand and position ourselves better to sell through Amazon store. In our analysis, we were able to uncover other areas of high potential growth. In this day and age, kids increasingly spend more time online. Meeting them at their preferred medium will only help LEGO continue to engage with their ultimate users. A number of LEGO competitors have shifted towards this direction. It will be a missed opportunity if LEGO does not do the same. Another area that could prove lucrative is on adult LEGO enthusiasts and collectors. These are diehard fans that can spend a little bit more compared to regular parents. These are several, there are several adult LEGO clubs around the world. There is even one here in Northern Alberta that if they're well supported and catered to could increase LEGO's revenues. Last but not least, penetrating new markets abroad could also increase LEGO's bottom line. This can be achieved by analyzing Amazon's toy data across different countries in conjunction to independent demographic data of the same countries in order to understand the needs and the position and, and to position our products so that they could sell well. We could focus on countries whose middle class income is increasing. Matter of fact, we did look into this and found out that India and China is one of those countries whose middle class is increasing substantially. This is a very useful information that would be able to, uh, to allow Lego to position uh, their products into partic these particular countries just simply because at the moment there are no online or physical stores located within those countries. Based on our analytics, here is how we will prioritize our recommendations. First, we will start by selling well, performing themes uh, that we already have, which this is just simply logic. Second, we will continue to make sure to incorporate themes that are catered to different demographical groups. This way, even adults or kids will be able to go to our Amazon store and be able to find things that work well for them. Third, we will take advantage of the ambassador and influences in order for product releases, where we can get, gather early data in order to feed into our models. We need this particular data in order to anticipate uh, the needs based on the new models that we are going to release. Next, we will tap into the overseas market and conduct a demographic um, tap into the overseas market in conjunction to the demographic analysis and Amazon toy sales analysis in order to look into countries such as India or China where the growth is potential there. And then last but not least, we will enhance the promotional effectiveness uh, by leveraging what uh, has made Lego successful over the years. And now, I would pass it on to Caroline, who's going to continue further talking about the demographic uh, based on age and also introduce the concept of the metaverse, which is pretty much where uh, the current trend in the world is going. Uh, one of the things we were able to do with the information we had was to optimize price by demographic. And we just had a small set of data on age, but of course, with more information available, you would look at many demographic features, gender, household characteristics, geography, and uh, user type. So when we did our modeling, um, we were able to look at the price and breakdown by age bucket, uh, some of the major ages that Lego um, produces their products for. So ages two to five, six to eight, nine to 12, and 14 to 21 is their general um, end users. And when you look at the interquartile range for most of the products that are sold within these age groups, there's clear delineated 
um, upper and lower bounds where most of the products are sold in and it does hinge on the group so what people are willing to spend for a two to five year old on a Lego product is completely different than what they are willing to spend for a nine to 12 year old. And of course that also reflects uh, a small number of uh, other um, parts of our model, like the number of pieces, the review difficulty. So with very few inputs, we're able to track fairly su successfully what price that we predict it should be sold at. Now, of course, there's always going to be, you know, that top 25 percentile and they can also um, create different products for those demographics. And I recommend they do. Um, they can um, command a much higher uh, pricing level for someone who's a fanatic or uh, even a collector who is older, maybe in the 14 to 21 year old range, or even for uh, some of the younger six to 12 year olds who are uh, using the educational sets. So now I actually wanna go um, into something that's quite important and uh, a strong recommendation for 2022, that Lego develop its digital twin in the metaverse. So what is a digital twin? Well, Lego's digital twin would be a digital 3D lookalike to one of its flagship stores. So either you can go to the physical location in your area that has the best store and a great user experience. Um, and honestly, for Lego fanatics, uh, they choose to go to Lego as the store for their birthday. Things like that, it's just a wonderful experience for them. On the other hand, parents or children themselves can go to Amazon and visit the digital twin to the physical store. So that would be a 3D store where they're uh, getting the, the shopping experience of the merchandising that you would see in your physical location, but without having to leave their house. And there's a lot of huge benefits and problems for consumers that a digital twin will solve. So, okay, before we go too much into it, why do this now and why do this on Amazon? So Amazon in December of 2021 has partnered with Matterport. Matterport, if you uh, go to the link below, they have specialized across many industries, but for retail, it brings a 3D um, lookalike that's delivered online. And uh, it, it's uh, just a wonderful experience. So it's like dropping into the store. The customer can walk around and they can look at every product on the shelf. Uh, the wonderful thing is it's merchandise. So they can walk to the themed and proper demographic. For instance, girls nine to 12, they can walk to that section of the store, see everything that's available as opposed to Amazon only having the one product that they're currently looking at. Now they can actually do comparisons. And then for each product, they can look in their own language, the particulars, the, the re review difficulty, the uh, number of pieces and, uh, and the price so that they can do their own comparisons. So this solves a huge problem for consumers and it solves a huge problem for Lego. So let's just look at how a digital twin can solve problems for customers. Well, with AI and natural language processing, they can ask um, a, di a digital store <laughs> worker, um, where is the section for this demographic, nine to 12 year old and a girl? I want, uh, you know, this difficulty rating and they can be brought directly to that section. And then they can have an individualized experience. So it can solve problems like um, two come to mind actually, would be a, a, the first being a parent who sees their child lo losing interest or going online more and more, losing interest in playing. And the parent is trying to solve a problem with Lego. The problem being, I don't want my child falling into the trap of only being online. I want them to develop their imagination and their building skills and their problem solving skills. I really think Lego can help solve this problem by pointing them to the, the correct product for their level of difficulty. And in fact, can track their own account so they know exactly where the child is based on past experience and just a few questions. 
how did your child like the last set that he bought? We know what it was. Was it too hard? Let's try an easier one. Or was it too easy? Let's try a more difficult one. Yes, a little bit more expensive, but this is going to solve your problem. So I think consumers really respond to that because it solves a need. Another complex uh, problem that a lot of people have is if they're grandparents or they're an uncle and aunt and they're trying to buy a fabulous birthday or Christmas gift for their granddaughter, their niece, their nephew. They don't know what the child has. They don't know what level the child is at or what themes they're interested in. They only know their age. <laughs> so if um, Lego can give fill in some of those blanks for them, they can actually deliver the perfect and wrapped gift. Amazon can get it to their doorstop, you know, on the 24th of December. So. The wonderful thing about this is they don't even have to live in the same country for this to happen. So this can be grandparents in Europe helping their grandchild in the, the North America or, you know, it's just very, very exciting. So this also fills in a lot of blank spaces for Lego. Uh, by Lego serving their customers like this, they also get the benefit of big data coming in much more than that they've ever had before. So not only do they have data more on the child and their interests and their levels and how they're developing in terms of their building ability and what skill level they need and how fast that develops, but it also fills in the blanks in terms of who is buying this. It's not just parents, it's the extended family, it's friends buying it for their birthday parties. Then they have a much fuller view of not only the end user but the purchaser and they're meeting all of those needs through their digital twin in the metaverse thank you for listening to our recommendations akim we really enjoyed your class thank you to my group members as well as thank you so much akim and merry christmas to everyone thank you merry christmas merry christmas